This is part two of a series of a couple of videos on maps in uh, Java as, uh, as they pertain to the Java Collections framework. And in this video, I'm going to talk in some detail about how hash maps actually work in Java. And so just as background, last video we talked about map uh, as an interface. It takes a key and a value. Those are both objects you can put in whatever kind of object you want and we use the concrete implementation of the map called a hash map. And the hash map is a special kind of data structure. If you look at the actual Java documentation, hash map says it's a hash table based on the implementation of the map interface. Now you might ask, what is a hash table? So the hash table, it's an interesting data structure that allows very, very fast lookup. Um, and that's what they're talking about here in this search, this 01. That means it's a constant time to look up a key inside of a hash table. And the way that this is achieved is the key has some kind of hash function that the key is put through, and then that hash function computes to a value, usually an integer. And using that integer, it can look up a space in a set of buckets to where it can find the value for that key. And this is different from having all of your data stored in some array and then having to iterate over the array, searching each value explicitly. Um, with, a, with a hash map, you can search much, much faster if you know the value of the, if you know the exact key. Um, so because of that, hash tables are, are very, um, they're very important because of their speed, their, their uh, flexibility, and just because maps in general, the key value store system, it's very flexible and useful. Because while you can have a key and a value and they can both be strings, you can also have the key be a string and the value be a list. Or you can even have the key be um, some kind of complex data and then your value can even be a map of other, of other associative arrays. So it can get very, um, you can get very creative with it and uh, it can be very uh, flexible. <clears throat> now the trick about um, hash functions is that in Java there is something called hash code. So we can see if we actually look at the, the um, code of how hash map actually works in Java, when you, when you call get, and again, we're calling get on the interface, so this is exactly the same as when we put stuff into our map, and then we go and call get by the key. When you call get, it does something called hash. And I've opened up hash in this tab here. What hash actually does, it calls key.hashcode. And you may know that strings have a hash code. They have a, a method that calls hash code. And hash code is it's just a, a method you can implement. It's on every object. And so I have a dog class here for an example of doing this hash code. Um, the dog has a name, it has an age, it has a weight. And we'll go ahead and generate a hash code based on this to give it some pseudo unique value. And the trick is a hash code, you want it to be basically unique across a large number of um, different values for this kind of object, but it's okay if there are collisions because the hash table can handle collisions and it can figure out um, if there is a collision, it can go manually look through all the things that hash to the same value and it'll figure out what the correct value is for that key anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is do source uh, generate hash code and equals and we're going to generate hash code and equals based on all three of these values. So if you have a dog and a dog's name is Fido, its age is 10 and its weight is 10, it would have to be the exact same dog with the name Fido, the age 10, and the weight 10 to be compared and say it's the same thing. Now if you had a dog with the same name but different ages, it would compare and say it's not the same. So we'll, we generated this code, hash code, it's just multiplying some prime number by the value of the age, by the value of the weight. And in uh, the uh, string, it's just calling hash code on string. And you can see the Java documentation has a function that based on the, so in is actually, it's for each character in the string. It's calling this, this, uh, um, this um, math right here. And it's, you're going to get some kind of uh, hash code based on uh, the value of each character in the string. Okay, so we have our dog implemented. And let's take a look at this for an example. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and create some dogs. 
So I'll say dog uh, d1 equals new dog. And I'm going to use this constructor where there's a name, and we'll call it Fido. We'll say age is one, and weight is five kilograms, pounds, doesn't matter. Um, D2, new dog, um, we'll call this Snoopy. And we will say the age is uh, 10, and the weight is um, 15, how about that? And we'll do a third dog. We'll say d3 equals new dog. And let's give this dog the same. Uh, we'll give it. We'll give it a different name. We'll call it Buster. But we'll give it the same um, attributes as Fido for the other values. So what we can do, we need to think about how we want to store this. And so in our map, we can have a map that has a string as the lookup. So the string can be the name, or the, the, um, the, the key can be the lookup for the dog, and we can make the string be the lookup as a name, and we can make the value be the dog. So we'll say dogs equals new hash map. Whoops, it's supposed to be hash map. There we go. And we'll say dogs.put, and I'll say, um, d1.name and the value will be d1 so the key will be fido and the the value will be the actual dog record so we'll do the same thing here again and um then we'll say whoops d2 uh, i'm just gonna copy this just for Whoops. Uh, D3. And we'll go ahead and just print that out and see what that looks like. We're going to run this as a Java application. And you'll see the key and the values printed out. And unfortunately, the, the values, we got just dogs as uh, the memory references. So the reason that, that happened is because we didn't implement two string. So we can go ahead and do that. I'm going to do um, source generate two string, and we're going to generate the two string not with the well. Let's just use all the fields. How about that? So there's the two string we generated, and now if we run this program again, we'll see some much nicer messaging in here. Yeah, so the first one is Buster, that's the key. And then the name of Buster, it has this other attributes, it has these other attributes, right? So what we've done here, we've created a data structure that um, the hash code is based on the name. So the hash code will be uh, string.hashcode. So this will be, the hash code will be the hash code for the string Fido. The hash code for this one will be the uh, string hash code value for Snoopy. Um, so when we when we go to look this up and we want to get the dog, we can say dogs dot get Snoopy, and it will very quickly hash that value for Snoopy and grab that out of there. So again, looking back at this, we've got the key. Ours is Snoopy, or sorry, it's um, it's going to be Fido, Snoopy, and Buster. We're going to throw it through a hash function, and then it's going to go to a value with a bucket with the actual um, uh, value of the dog in there. And you can see the lookups. If you know the name of the dog, the lookups very fast. Whereas if you had a list, let's create a list, uh, a list of dogs. Got to import that Java util list and call this the dog list. And this will be an array list. List. There we go. And the the only way to really find the dog in here is so let's say I want to find a dog named um, uh, to find. Uh, let's call Snoopy. If I want to find Snoopy, I'm going to have to actually loop through uh, these dogs. 
in the dogs list. And you can see if you had a very large list, this would be slow. So now I, I need to say if dog dot name dot equals to find uh, found the dog we searched for. Well, that was interesting. Well, we didn't add any dogs to it. <laughs> uh, let's add the dogs to it. Dog dot add. Uh, let's call this uh, d one dot name. Or sorry, d one. Dogs list dot add. D two. Dogs list dot add. D three. And so you can see the difference rather than doing something very, um, very efficient where we create this hash code system with the hash table and we can look up directly by a value that we know we want to look up ahead of time. We have to, we have to manually loop through each dog and then compare the name um, in a very laborious process here. So um, this is kind of the advantage of a hash map. It's a fast constant time lookup based on whatever the key you give it. And you can even make these, um, you can make multiple hash maps with different keys in them that map to the same values so that you can do lookups on multiple different kinds of, um, of uh, keys if you need to search on different things. So hash maps are very flexible. Uh, they're very um, good to know about for this kind of thing. And I think next video we're going to do an example where we break down a large piece of text and we count um, the uh, occurrences of each word in that text. So thanks for watching.